This episode of The Edge is brought to you by Audible.com, offering more than 180,000 titles for smartphone, tablet, and desktop. To get a free audiobook of your choice and help Trek.fm at the same time, visit audibletrial.com slash trek.fm. And also by Enterprise in Space, an international program of the nonprofit National Space Society. Find out how you can help science and education and become a virtual crew member aboard the NSS Enterprise Orbiter by visiting enterpriseinspace.org. And if you want to join the conversation and share your thoughts on this episode, join the Babel Conference, our listeners group on Facebook. Just type B-A-B-E-L into the Facebook search field. We look forward to seeing you there. You're listening to Trek FM. What have you done out there on the edge of Federation space? Hello and welcome to Tracks from the Edge, Trek FM show in which we provide audio commentary for all the new Star Trek episodes. I'm Mike. And I'm Max. And you said Trek. I know. Uh, Today we're going to be taking a look at Star Trek Discovery Season 2, Episode 10. Boy, this season has just been flying by. Yeah, it's just like one episode and then another one. And uh, that's happened nine times. (laughs) The Red Angel. Okay, so before we get started on this this episode, uh, we have a comment. Mm Mm-hmm. From the Babel Conference on our last episode. Okay. It's from Brian. All right. He says, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this without knowing what he's talking about at all, but uh-huh. assuming that you do. Sure. Okay. Okay. Some Trek fans are too stuck on the obsolete model of a single alternating timeline that is subject to the butterfly effect and the grandfather paradox. I agree. In the last... You agree? Um, yeah. This is what you said. Okay. Yeah. All right. In the last 50 years, especially in the last 25 years, that has been replaced with the multiverse model and the parallel timelines model. We don't know what parallel universe or parallel timeline control is from. Same for the Red Angel. Here we have the mirror universe Georgiou mucking about in the universe of her doppelganger, but it doesn't occur to you that Control or the Red Angel could be doing the same thing? They could be both from parallel universes and parallel timelines rather than from an alternate timeline. Mm -hmm. Terminator is also that obsolete model that Star Trek has abandoned now that they've introduced the mycelial network. Depends on where you stop counting Terminator films. Okay. Whether or not the butterfly effect is theoretically possible with an alternate timeline depends on how quantum mechanics work with regard to time travel. But we already know that it does work in the Star Trek setting. That is the fiction part of science fiction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's not entirely wrong. It's, there is a there is a problem there, and that is um, the question of what is happening in the show. And what is happening in the show is that control is from the universe in which the characters live. Control is there. It exists. It's in a building. They know where that building is, uh, and they are being assaulted by an artificial intelligence from the distant future. I think the figure is five hundred years in the future. Is that right? I don't remember. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. It's not super important. But there's this the AI in their future. So it might not be the future that they inevitably get to. So there's a question of, like, what is the future if there is only one future? And most likely there's a whole bunch of futures because we already know that there are parallel timelines. But the mirror universe and alternate timelines are not the same thing because the mirror universe is not an alternate timeline because it doesn't follow the rules of that. And the question of how quantum mechanics relates to time travel is not really that important because we know how quantum mechanics works in relation to physics. So when you travel through time, quantum mechanics still apply to you and everything that you do and everything that you interact with and everything that happens as a consequence of that. 
So we do know that the butterfly effect is a very real thing, so that when you go back in time, you change the entire future. So the entire future is then eradicated by your interference in the past. Inevitably, there's no way around it. So if you travel back in time and multiple timelines exist, you destroy your present in a sense. In another sense, it's still there. You just can never get back to it. The future that is created by your going to the past is a different future. So you can't ever get back to the same future. You might be able to get back to the future that looks very similar. If you go back in time one day and then go forward in time one day, it's going to look pretty much the same. You might not never notice the difference. On a quantum level, it would be lots of differences, and uh, the result would be incalculable, and uh, maybe centuries down the line you might be able to figure something out, but most likely not. So the question of whether or not there are multiple timelines is already answered. We know there are. There is a future in which all life is wiped out. We know that that is not the only future, because we have seen a future that's 1,000 years in the future, and there are still human beings walking around doing stuff. So we know two things, that there's, there are multiple timelines, and there's an AI in the future that's interfering in the past, and there's a red angel that is interfering in the plans of that AI. Now the question at hand is, what is the purpose of interfering in the past? What is the red angel's goal? If its, if its goal is to affect the future, why? What's its motivation? There are so many alternate timelines, why does it care about one? Unless it's trying to create a very specific future, a very specific future that it's trying to get to. So then the question is not, why is the Red Angel, we'll get into it in this episode, but like, is the Red Angel interfering in the past in order to preserve itself? Uh, it doesn't really make any sense, but it's the kind of thing Star Trek does on a regular basis. So that was my working theory going into this episode. And in this episode, we'll see where that falls apart and it's replaced with a new thing that makes even less sense. Okay. I, I guess uh, that that works for me. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I hope that some people appreciated that. Uh I, it's it's a little over my head. I mean, we could spend the next three hours breaking it down. Hours? But, yeah. Or Try days. years. Okay. All right. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just let it Think about simmer. how long I've been thinking about Back to the Future and trying to make that work. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, this is a, this is a stupid thing to do. Mm. This is a waste of time. Why are you trying? <laughs> I noticed that at one like, point in your explanation, you said Back to the Future. Oh, like well, you as were a phrase? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Cool. Well, uh, that's something. And uh, here's another thing. Um, this episode was directed by Hannah Lee M. Culpepper, who, of course, mm -hmm. is directing the first two episodes of The Picard Show. And um, it's written by... Uh, a couple people who have been with Discovery for a while but have not actually written anything for Discovery, and those two people are Chris Silvestri and Anthony Moranville, who are both uh, essentially assistants to the writing staff. I believe one of them is an assistant and one of them is a researcher, but as I understand it, this is kind of how the biz works, you know? You've got people who are helping you out and they're looking for their shot and you know as part of this sort of like apprenticeship thing you give them a chance to do their thing and then they they write an episode of star trek yeah pretty cool it's a thing it's pretty cool anyway the other thing about this episode is that it spoilers features Another supporting cast member, Sonia Sohn. It's a good name. It's a, like a superhero name. In, in, in the titular role of the Red Angel. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. I mean, we can talk about this later on, too, but whatever. We'll just talk about it right now. They did a really good job of keeping this under wraps because Sonia Sohn, I mean, yeah, she's not Brad Pitt, but she's a big name she's an established actress who's been in lots of really high quality stuff for example the wire 
is probably what she's best known for. Um, she's also in for you for you uh, people outside of the U.S. who have Netflix, obviously, because you're watching this. Click on over to High Flying Bird, the new Steven Soderbergh joint, uh, which is probably the best movie of the year so far, and she's in that. So that's cool. That movie's about sports, right? It's about. I'm not gonna see that. No, no. See, I think that you would like it because it's about taking down the system, taking down the system of sports. Oh, are they destroying sports? Is it an anti-sports movie? Because I'd be in for that. It's an anti-sports I know business it's not. movie. I know it's not. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not interested in it. You would like it as good. They're going to be talking about sports too much. That could be, but it's very good. Anyway... I need to spend my time thinking about time travel in fiction. Okay. I cannot waste it by dealing with people who can throw a ball well. (laughs) I mean, whatever. It's uh, fine. It's it's much more about business than it is about sports, but whatever. And and it's much more about social constructs and, and, uh, you know, rich people and their control over, like, the people who make them money. Dude, I'm 100% on board for that kind of thing. The problem is not that, like, I think it's bad. It's that I can't stand it when people talk about sports. Yeah. So the more they talk about it, the more I'm going to go, oh, there's probably something else I could do. I could probably overanalyze Back to the Future. Okay. All right. We'll go for that then. Regardless, everyone else, check out High Flying Bird. It's amazing. And Sonia Sohn's in it, and she's great. So, I mean, yeah, and just the idea, well, whatever. We'll get into it later. But the idea that they got her for this role, I think, is very cool because when we get to it, like, it can't just be random actress who no matter how talented they are uh, is is someone who is it, it does not register with the audience you need someone who is a name who is a recognizable face in order to sort of like carry that 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 gravitas anyway whatever we'll we'll talk about that later on should we get this going oh my god yeah all right, so we're just past that Netflix logo or that CBS All Access logo in the episode. We're in the black portion after that logo, but before the previously on segment. Oh my God. And we're going to give a countdown, and we're going to start this up in three, two, one, start. Previously on Star Trek Discovery. 3D chess. It's like regular chess, but with... More complicated construction. Yes. So here we see what has happened previously. Spock was visited by the Red Angel. The Red Angel showed him the end of the universe. Or galaxy, at least. I guess just galaxy. Well, the galaxy's still there. It's just there's no, like, you know, sentient. regular biological sentient life moving around in that galaxy. Right. Pretty big. Pretty big. Oh, sure. It's a big deal. And here we have Culber and Stamets laying down some groundwork for their ongoing relationship. I don't mean that in terms of, like, relationship. I mean, like, in the storytelling sense. And here we see Arium. It can be two things. Getting infected with some viruses. Yep. And... uh, Sacrificing herself for the fate of that those yeah those guys you've beings. seen movies you know what's going on mm-hmm. and now we are into the episode proper uh, we've got some tricorder stuff and Commander Arium is uh, I got I'll say this for her. she looks great. I mean, yeah, the, the the makeup and everything is really cool. Yeah. It, it, they got a good so, team there. So we just saw that uh, that little 
wristband, the stay in your quarters wristband. Yeah, the Ash uh, Tyler wears. <laughs> yeah, the Apple Watch that keeps you in your room at all times. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't checked uh, Star Trek dot com yet, but I'm guessing that they're gonna be selling that as a as a fitness tracker soon. So, I mean, as a as house arrest, you know, bracelets go. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's got that Delta Shield on it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think we've talked about that somewhere else. You know how. It's kind of comical that they have the Delta Shields on, you know, the the foot foot uh, coverings. What? I believe they're called shoes <laughs> uh, with the little uh, buckles and, um, you know, on every little shirt that they have and everything. And it's on their phasers and on their tricorders and on their everything. Real cheese sandwiches. Exactly. Yeah. They burn, the, they, they burn the Delta Shield into there. They carve the... the yeah. The automated um, fades that are done. They have a Delta Shield in the hair. It's, right. It's all right. over the place. And, you know, like last season in particular, I was making fun of this show for doing that everywhere. Like, geez, you know, you guys really are all about the branding. But then I look at, like, my wardrobe and... Mm -hmm. I have shirts that have Delta Shields on them. I have shoes that have Delta Shields on them. You have, I, and you have so many things that have the White Sox logo on them. Exactly. I'm wearing you a White Sox logo here. You are surrounded in iconography here. and logos mm -hmm. and branding of all sorts. I mean, it's it's really kind of a nightmare. I remember there was one time where I somehow convinced you to go to a baseball game with me yeah and you said that you would but only if i did not wear any logos on my clothing yes because and, here's the thing deep down <laughs> it really upsets me and it was really really hard to find clothing that didn't have any yeah. logos on it yeah so maybe i just wanted you to struggle because I knew that I would be doing so. Yeah. Well, that's that's how you roll. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I I keep a like a playlist, an, an ever growing playlist with all of the. Uh, I guess I guess what you would call it. It's not like, I mean, source music. I don't know. All, all of the songs which you hear in Discovery or in the even in the 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 advertising and everything. So I've got like that, that Lenny Kravitz song in there. I've got the funny face song and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I'm guessing I haven't checked, but I'm guessing that the Saru song isn't on here, but that's going to be a tough call for me because, uh, I'm not really digging the Kelpian music. I have to say it's a little, uh, um, uh, my feeling is that, uh, like my wife was like, "Oh, he's a good singer," and I'm like, "I mean, you know, it's not Apparently, that hard to write a song when you can make up all the words." <laughs> it is actually Doug Jones singing, so yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have anything against his singing. It's just like, come on. I mean, you can make up words, you know. Like, I mean, how how do you rhyme with orange? I mean, you go florgange. You know, I just made up. That's a real word in my language. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they worked it all out, though. You know, I don't know. I mean, the Universal Translator can do lip sync, but it can't. It can't translate lyrics. Come on, guys. Know. Yeah. Well, no, I think you know it, it was intentional. You know, it's just like you know, there's sometimes where like you know, like the the like the the movie which is in English, Paris, I love you, right? It's still Paris, je t'aime like on the box or whatever, even though that's, you know what I mean? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Because we have universal translators, and I don't understand what you're saying. What's I'm just point? saying that, like, in, in in the present world, there are times where we choose not to translate I agree. I, I, it, it's just a weird decision. Um, yeah. So at this point in the episode, um, there's a point where uh, Pike says that for now, the future AI is dormant. Mm -hmm. 
seems that, to imply that that's going to come back to haunt them somewhere. No, no. Down the road. Honestly, you don't. You, that sentence doesn't raise a, a bunch of red flags. Uh, in in what way? Wow. Oh God. What? How can the AI that doesn't exist yet be lying dormant for now? It doesn't exist oh. now. Okay. All right. Okay. That's fine. I, I have trouble thinking fourth dimensionally. I think we went over that last month, right? Last <laughs> Jesus. week. Oh, I God. I don't know. I swear, Marty McFly made everyone an <laughs> idiot on this subject. I don't get it. <laughs> yep, yep. He was my idol growing up. Um, I love Tilly's sort of... Pr- I mean, she really is the voice of the fans, isn't she? Like, those doors just open all the time, you know? It's yeah, what we're always thinking. Every once in a while. She just it, says it. Every once in a while she says exactly what I'm thinking. And in this point, she's like, oh, the red angel is you, Michael. And I'm like, duh, Tilly. <laughs> and later on she has a line where I was like, oh, my God. I said the same thing that she said to the point like I actually wasn't sure she said it because I was saying the same words at the same time. Was it what just happened? Yes. Yeah, I think a lot of people have said that. But I was like, I, I had to rewind it because I was like, oh, okay. So we're we're both not sure we know what happened. Yeah, yeah. But, um, okay, so yeah, we just found out that Michael is the Red Angel. And here's we the thing about We just found out! This. We just found out, guys. Here's the thing about this, right? I didn't think that Michael was the Red Angel. And when they said it here, now granted, I was pretty tired because I made the mistake of going to see, and I'm saying this like it's a mistake, like, like, but I made the mistake of going to see us prior to watching this. And let me put, no, no, no. Let me flip that around. I made the mistake of oh. staying up to watch this after seeing Guys, us. Guys, Mike just said it was a mistake to see us. No, 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 no. Can us we is, roast him alive now? Is us that is how a, this works? Us is a very good movie. I highly I know. Recommend. I'm seeing it on Sunday. I've got okay. tickets. Anyway. It looks so, dope. Yeah. So anyway, um, the the I, I was so I was a little tired while watching this for the first time, and um, when it was revealed, I was like, "Well, I like how they didn't make a big deal out of it because everything's been who's the red angel, who's the red angel, who's the red angel," and then you would expect when it's revealed that it's Michael, there'd be like the big like. Dun, 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 you know, music. And there there wasn't that. And I'm like, I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that they knew that a lot of people were guessing this. And then when they actually said it, it was just a thing. And, you know, it doesn't need to be like a big reveal. It can just be a thing. And then, of course, at the end, it turns out that that's not the real thing. And... That the big reveal is a dun dun dun, and I mean they totally got me on the dun 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 moment. But I feel like, in retrospect, given the structure of this show and its love of mysteries, they should have dun 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 the 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 Michael scene in yeah. order to throw people off because. I was thinking that's weird that they didn't do that. And the reason why I was thinking that, I I guess I was giving them, I I, I mean, I'll say it this way, too much credit in, in, in downplaying it as like a thing that doesn't really matter. But that's not what they were doing. They were just thinking of it as something that doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I, my problem is that uh, I don't think either one really matters. Well, uh, I mean, you know, that's fair. Whatever. And I like my, my problem is like the, the this red angel time travel mystery. It doesn't make sense. So until it makes sense, I'm not going to react with any sort of like like sense of um, surprise or shock or wonder because so far every revelation has just been, Oh, okay. So I mean, like there's a, there's a whole bunch of like time travel plot device, like cards in my head. And so I'm like, 
Oh, oh, it's um, it's 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 the Terminator paradigm with the twelve monkeys gambit added on. Okay, that's a that's 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 a not not a completely bizarre hand, but like, you know, it's it's unusual. You don't see it a lot. In retrospect, I think maybe I was more excited about seeing Sonia Sone than I was about finding out who the Red Angel was. Yeah, I get that. Um, but whatever. Because it doesn't the Red matter. Angel doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, so here we have uh, Section Thirty One people coming on board to to do their thing. Um, this is another case. This whole story with uh, Alan Van Spring's character. It's another case of like there being a mystery that doesn't need to be. You know, the, the, I mean, this 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 season in particular seems to like really love that. It's like, I mean, I guess last season did too, but last season we were just kind of like thrown into things and like presented with things, and you know, like here it's is very much sort of like in that hero's vein of like <laughs> <laughs> take that discovery <laughs> and I, deal with it, Brian Fuller. <laughs> Who worked on yes. heroes? Yeah. Yes, yeah, like half you just, the, you just burned a lot of people. No, I didn't mean to. Well, I didn't mean to burn anyone. I mean, I, I do not like heroes, and I thought it was like that whole like mystery thing that they did with it was kind of like it's Achilles' heel, and it's weird because like last year, like there were at least you mean, three people. You mean the who, concept of the show? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. You mean the general <laughs> thrust of the series, Heroes, <laughs> but last was year there... the Achilles heel of the program? <laughs> I guess so, I guess so. Okay. And, and last year there were like three writers uh, from uh, he- Heroes who worked on Discovery. This year there's zero, zero heroes, zero heroes. Anyway, um, so... A world without heroes. Yep, there you go. So uh, it's just it's just one of those things where like here's another one where it's like um they seeded this early on like she she doesn't know about how you're responsible for her parents death. Yep. And it's like w- w- why are we keeping this stuff secret? Like cuz the reveal is not like ah ha ha, you know? It's just kind of like like you could tell the audience without telling Michael and still have the same thing. If anything, it's it, to me it's more effective because, like, this is not an, a, a mystery which we have any way of figuring out. It's the same thing as what she said to Spock as a child. It's another right, one of exactly. these mysteries where if if you tell us what this character is keeping secret, yeah, then we know that it's significant to them. And we can, and then we can concentrate on that thing instead of trying to figure out what that thing is. Well, the thing is, I mean, like, I think that I, I, I think it's safe to say that I watch an absurd amount of television and film. Uh, and television, at least, maybe not movies. You still haven't I, seen us. What's up with that? Um, it came out yesterday. I, I, I don't see your point. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a job. It's a thing uh, that doesn't involve um, movies. So, uh, so the, the, the I I am so accustomed to these mystery gambits that I um I just kind of tune them out. Like, yeah, uh, you kind of have to, and I and I understand <sighs> that's the way that television works. You know, and I mean, we've like, talked about this. Like on some level, I kind of just go like, like who's the Red Angel? It's probably Michael. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, so here they're explaining how it works with the wormhole thing and everything. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, but I'm wondering what time frame she's actually from. What time frame the Red Angel is from? Yeah, because I mean, if you look at her like age wise. She's probably about the age that she would be today, right? I mean, she's she's Michael's mom, and I mean, what Sonia Sone 
Uh, it doesn't have her her age listed on the uh, IMDb, but I mean, she's she's a you know she's about that same age. She's about the age that you would be. You know what I mean? She's about the age that she would be. She would be if she were to be playing Michael's mom today without any time travel, right? Assuming that Michael's mom had not died when she was reported to have died. Right. She would be the right age now. Right? I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure I know how old Michael is. I mean, she's like, she's like. 30 is she i'm not sure i mean like she's around there i'm sure if we go to you know memory alpha they'll be able to tell us exactly how old she is but she's like it's not super important but like no i know if she is if if she is playing michael's mom and i think that she is playing michael's mom then they have a lot to explain well they've said that she's playing michael's mom have they yeah where have they said that well, because she comes in and then Michael says, Mom? Yeah. So she's she looks like Michael's mom. Uh, okay. All right. I guess she looks like Michael's mom. So, yeah, maybe she is from an alternate timeline or something, something like that. Yeah, that I, would make more sense from a like a logical point of view. It would make l- no sense from a like a motivation of a person point of view but okay. then again the alternative scenario doesn't make any sense from that point of view either okay a- according to memory alpha at this point in time michael burnham is 31 years old so there you go okay anyway well, while we're debating this we're missing uh the best scene in this episode and maybe no 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 it's happening right now oh yeah what yeah, I wasn't sure what happened. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. All right. All right. He, Culber walks into that room, and I was like, why is this guy <laughs> rubbing it in Stamets' face that he is the hottest thing on this ship? Oh, I thought you were going to say, why is he wearing just a straight up suit that you could buy at, you know, Men's Warehouse that or whatever? That looks great. No, no, I, I agree. I agree, right? <laughs> but, like, if this were next generation he'd be wearing like you know freaking pajamas with like weird like yeah you know yeah shining carpet patterns on them or something you know what i mean yeah or like that crazy thing that uh picard sometimes wore with that like that weird like combination of like like the hugh hefner deep v (laughs) t-shirt and the the weird like scrooge mcduck pajamas that was so strange yeah something like that i i'm not sure would be less great looking on him i mean that could be whatever but you know at the same time like i think about it and i'm like well i i wear an indiana jones jacket all the time and that's based on a design from like 1935 so maybe it's not that weird i don't know right i i don't have a i i don't think it's weird like my problem with with what Culver is wearing is like dress a little bit more conservatively. This guy is still in love with you. I, uh, you know what? I, I'm I I think he's a, he's he's just he's just rocking it. You know he's that's whatever. Yeah, he's like a, you know. I don't know. It's it just it was weird how contemporary it was. It was very Battlestar Galactica of them with that choice. Yeah. But anyway, but that scene, that scene, like I, I watched it the first time and I'm like, this is super weird. Like what is going on in the scene? But then I watched it the second time and I'm like, okay, again, this is another mystery, but this is one that I can get behind because at the very least it's fun and seems, I don't know, kind of low stakes in the grand scheme of things. But like as soon as he walks in, that's when... uh Giorgio is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this, and then like yeah. she's like doing all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And then like he leaves or whatever, or she leaves. But then later in the episode, when like Culber comes up to Stad- Stamets and is like, "Hey, uh, I-, I just wanted to say," and Stamets is like, "Get 
done. No, not now. Come on, not now, dude. Now's not the time. Right. Maybe it might never. never. It might not ever be the time, or right. something to that effect. There's a shot in there, like right after that, like while they're having their their little, you know, I, I'm not argument, but whatever, where f- they cut to Giorgio and she just kind of looks over with that sort of like sinister grin, like I did that. You know, mm-hmm. like everything is going according to plan. Yeah. And I I don't know what that plan is. Maybe it's just a plan to mess with them just because she's like, whatever, I like messing with people. But <laughs> I, I I'm I'm down with that mystery. I'm down with that mystery. Like I'm I'm trying to give it an optimistic appraisal, and I feel like Giorgio is just doing the thing that people do sometimes. Like she's just stirring the pot, being a scamp, being playful like poking these people but there is this undercurrent of like these guys are stuck uh if i poke them hard enough they will become unstuck and i can take credit for it oh maybe that's what she's doing maybe she's (laughs) trying to to you know play matchmaker or something I I absolutely think that's what's going on, and okay. and that is my optimistic appraisal. A more cynical appraisal no, no. is like a, a bubbling under the surface, but like I do think that's what's going on. I, I think you're right, you know, and 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 uh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's like because I mean, like we've seen her, like there's that scene with the little baby mm-hmm. where she's like, oh, kuchi kuchi coo, you know, and everything. Maybe it's you know, deep down. Deep down, even though she is, you know, like this, you know, empress in the mirror universe who's killed thousands, if not millions of people and everything like that. Maybe deep down, you know, she's she's a, a good a good soul who just wants just wants people to to be happy and, and find true love. I don't think that's it. OK, well, whatever. That's what I'd like to think. So. Yeah, I maybe, don't think maybe that, that's what. Maybe it's not going to be a Section Thirty One show. Maybe it's going to be like a, a a matchmaker show, like Empress hey, Matchmaker. A dude, I would watch I mean, the hell out of that. S- stop selling it, <laughs> because she, we should she, pitch that. She's got like a ship, and it's like in the shape of a heart, and she just flies from. Okay, I'm not involved anymore. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> oh, whatever. Anyway. So, uh, Burnham just Burnham. Uh, punched a dude twice. twice, and then she's gonna have to take that back when she finds out that you know her mom's still alive, right? Because one was for her mom and one was for her dad. Yeah, she's gonna have to take back one of those punches. Yeah, of course, he's you know. dead now, so spoilers, but whatever. <sighs> it's complicated. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I like on on the one hand I understand why she punched him but like here's the thing it's not really on him Oh no but I mean there's that that like it, aggression keeping it a secret was not cool No I mean it's but that but that type of thing I mean like if you're it, it, I mean I just experienced that rage just the other day um because uh like who killed your parents <laughs> It wasn't that bad, but you know, like well, it wasn't. I I made I made some purchases from a, as it turns out, rather questionable retailer at the last uh, Star Trek convention, and I had these are the same situations. I had to go to my credit card company to try to reverse the charges since Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting a refund, and the credit card company is like, "Sorry, we can't help you," and I was ready to punch the person who was on the other end of the phone twice once for my mother and once for my father once for my for 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 the one thing i bought and once for the other thing that i bought even though they had absolutely nothing to do with this they were just like and and then you'd like you'd like (laughs) kick him in the ribs for the shipping yeah you know (laughs) they were just like legally we can't do anything i you know and i'm but but i had that rage that misplaced rage and you know, and and he he did have something to do with it. You know, he's like, yeah. I I made a mistake, I messed up, and yeah, people but I died. Mean, it's, it's not like 
it's not like uh, like her her parents were like innocent scientists working on a project, and he was like, "Hey, Klingons, there's some scientists you could go kill yeah. if you you know but slip still, a little few bucks under the table for me." In, like, no, they in were in the moment. With him. In the moment, she's going to be extremely mad, and she's going to take it out on him. I know? agree. It, that's, that's I agree. That's how these things work. And you know, probably after a few hours, she's going to be like. I probably shouldn't have punched him in the nose. I feel bad about that, you know. Yeah. And yeah, the thing is, but, I, but mean, I mean, in like both, I see in both that shoes, as, yeah. I can I can see it from both points of view. Like if I were him and she punched me twice, and like my nose was broken, I'd be like, "All right." I mean, honestly, grand scheme of things, probably out I, of common. I, I, that seems fair. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I agree. You know, it's just that's human nature. Yes, he yeah. didn't. He didn't maybe deserve it, but in the moment, she thought he, he definitely. Did. He, he definitely should have like like told her differently. Yeah, he should have told her. He should have told her instead of keeping it secret. Yeah. So here she's uh, working out her anger in a much better way, as Spock points out. Although, boy, again, this show with the hand-to-hand combat, even when it's against like a like a dummy, it's just mm, still haven't quite mastered that yet. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, in the last episode, like Burnham jumped into the air and used both of her legs to kick Arium across the room. Yeah, well, there is no spoon, dude. And and I was like, that is a straight up Kirk move. <laughs> He would do that if he was in a z- low gravity environment. Yeah, no and and she does that thing where she like uses both of her fists to like like clap on Arium's head. Yeah, and I'm like, that is a Kirk move. <laughs> That's straight up. He a Kirk did it move, the a lot. That, yeah, yeah. You know, they they had that video game when uh, I think End of Darkness came out. There was like a, a Kelvin timeline video game, and the whole thing was like you were like fighting Gorn and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the moves that they had in there when you were running around as Kirk fighting Gorn was to box their ears. It was it's, not, it's not a crazy move. It's just weird how often it happens in the original series. Yeah, yeah. It was like his go-to. So. Yeah. Another scene where Spock is super nice. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's all right, you know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, he's a little, he's a little much. <laughs> all right, all right. I know what that laugh was. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> He's the kind of guy that would yell about time travel for 15 minutes. I, I did not say that at and all. And then another 15 minutes after the episode ends. You know, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <sighs> God. Yeah. But I also love this, this Spock thing. I mean, it's kind of great. She's like, thanks, Spock. That was really helpful. And he's like, uh, "That's oh, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. I, I wanted to tell you something yeah. else here." Yeah, I I didn't come here to help oh, you. Yeah, with no, your that's not. Problems. I wasn't. No, I came here to give you critical plot information yeah. so that we could get this episode moving. <laughs> I'm sorry if you misunderstood. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not here for your needs. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh, man. Yeah, no, I, I, I wasn't coming here to make you feel better. I was telling you that we have to kill you in order to, uh, you know, succeed at our mission. So I hope you're cool with that. Yeah, this is the thing. Um, that doesn't make... All right. Well, I mean, I guess this is what I was thinking as someone who doesn't understand time travel. First off, I mean, like, okay, they seem to be thinking about things very linearly. I mean, maybe there is a whatever, but like... Like, what if they catch this person in the future, but, like, she's working out of order and she saved 
her on this planet before saving her on that planet in episode one or whatever. You, you know, Uh-oh, there's that what thing. What happens then? There's that thing. But then also, like, you know, I mean, why is she waiting until after? Like, she could see that she dies, <laughs> but she doesn't need to wait until after she's dead. She could, you know, set, oh. she's in a time machine. She could go back oh. whenever she wants. Ten whoa, minutes whoa, should whoa, do whoa. it, right? Ten minutes to do it. Yeah, set the dial to the ten minutes before it happens, right? guys. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. She's in a crazy red angel costume, and she can appear anywhere at any time. Why doesn't she just appear now and say, whoa, <laughs> this plan is stupid. Here's an explanation for all the reasons why this plan will not work. Get a pen, you're going to need to take notes. And then she goes on a rant for 15 minutes at the beginning of the episode, and then another 15 at the end of the episode, and then and then she just bounces. And she's like, peace, and she's gone. And they're like, did you, did you, did you understand any of that? <laughs> no? All right, then let's just keep going. Uh, I don't know. Time travel is hard. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, it is kind of interesting. Like when she was talking to uh, Leland, right? That's the character's name, right? Leland. Um, yep. she's talking to Leland, and Leland is like, uh, first off, she was like, "Well, we learned twenty years ago that the Klingons were developing time travel technology," and I, of course, do that thing that I always do when everyone talks about a specific moment in Star Trek history, and I'm like, "Okay, twenty years ago would have been twenty two forty some." So wait, wait, okay, thirty. I don't. But then the wait, episode wait, 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 wait. is that 20, Enterprise twenty two forty thirty thirty seven. Okay. Like twenty two forty six to like twenty two. It, it, it would have been. This is like twenty two fifty seven. So that would have been like twenty two. This is twenty two fifty seven. Is that canon? Yeah. Twenty two fifty seven. Yeah. Okay, so twenty two fifty seven. So, right. so, but, but, but the whole thing is like the reason why you know, like I was doing that that mental math, but uh, the reason why it was twenty years is because they needed to line it up with when Burnham's parents died. That's mm-hmm. that was the the time frame that they were referencing, and yeah. while they were doing that, like I missed the whole other thing, which was there are people who think that a lot of our technological advancements, like when we make huge jumps in technology, is because of future tech. And as TrekCore pointed out, that's a reference to that freaking. Sarah Silverman episode in uh, Voyager. Yes. yes. So that's cool. Um, um, Ed Begley Jr. Yeah. Ep- episode. And Ed Begley Jr. Sarah Silverman episode. That yeah. Was a, that two parter was really something. Yep. So uh, I it didn't that make was any cool. sense. But and, I then, mean, and then they're also talking about time crystals, which of course they, you know, that's what Mud had. Right. Oh, and also while he's talking about trying to buy a time crystal on the black market on the Klingon homeworld or whatever, he calls it Quonos, and no one caught that. And it's not even he didn't even say it on screen, so they could have, you know, looped it in with the correct pronunciation, but everyone missed it. So, or maybe that's just maybe he pronounced it wrong because he doesn't, you know, because it's spelled weird. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Like the character. the character i don't know anyway. i think it's one of those weird things where like it's got multiple pronunciations like is it is it cuba or is it cuba could be that illinois or illinois well so it's here- definitely not the latter <laughs> so here's a, uh, a, a an interesting thing which i feel i i don't know okay so how does this scene play to you um, I feel like this scene plays like this. Arium died. Oh, hey, Arium. <laughs> okay. See, I wasn't sure if you knew that that was, you know, the woman who played Arium in season one. I couldn't remember if whatever. But Here's the thing. I would not have known. I yeah. would not have known. Right, right. But you pointed right. it out in a previous episode, and I was like, well, I think I know why they're doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because Arium gonna die, <laughs> and they're, they don't want to fire her. <laughs> 
And then when Arium died, I was like, okay, so I was right about that. Is she going to like just straight up take Arium's job? No. And then they did that. I, I like to think that. I, I'd like to think that in some ways they were they were doing that as just a sort of like whatever, maybe an inside joke or something to some extent. I mean, if you want to call it that, whatever, sort of like an inside baseball thing. But I also like to think that part of it is part of sort of like the meta narrative, you know, like like all of this has happened before and all of this will happen again. Yeah. You know, that's what they're doing. Rebirth that's what they're doing. And sure. whatever. I don't know. Like, I, I like to think that there's something more to it than. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to think that there's something more to it than obviously what's happening. Well, I, I just, I okay. just, I just, that's my, my head canon is that they, I, they were, they were trying to, to, to speak to something on a, on a, on a more, um, I don't know, metaphorical I think, I think, level or something. I, I think what you're trying to say is you were hoping what they were doing was something less silly. No, I mean, I, I don't know. Because I'm okay. I mean, th- like, honestly, like, if I'm being completely honest, like, if I were doing this show, like, that's totally something that I would do. I would do it in the exact same way. Okay. And I have no problem with it. I have yeah. no problem with it. No, I don't it. have a problem with it either. I mean, like, like, I like that moment. I think it's fine. Yeah. Like, honestly, if I had not been told that that woman played Arium, I would not have noticed. Yeah. I would have been like, wow, she looks a lot like Arium. Does Pike <laughs> just like like having a person with that silhouette standing there? Yeah. But like, I mean, here's the thing. On the, on the one hand, I think that. And on the other hand, I think this is a very nice thing to do for an actor. Yeah. Because if you're on a show and you arrive at four in the morning to shoot at noon for 15 minutes. Right. And you do that for a year and they're like, uh, so do you want anything? Do you, do you have any requests for your character? And she's like, oh, I would love to not do that ever again. <laughs> and they're like, well, what if we killed you and brought on another character that you would play without the makeup see she's I, like oh that sounds great I, I don't i don't i don't think that that's what it was but i what i, I what i don't think that happened i think but if that but if like this is a situation why haven't they done this a lot i, I think why didn't they do that with michael dorn i, I like, god think about how great that would have been for him you know <laughs> i don't like, think that oh, that's what Worf's dead that's oh hey steve <laughs> I don't think that that's what happened. I, I think that this, in this particular case, you know, it, it was probably a case of like, okay, you know, like, I mean, they probably were like, we're going to have like this really, you know, intense emotional episode and we want the character to be a certain way. So we're going to recast it because we're not casting for someone who looks cool in a robot suit anymore. We're casting for someone who's going to portray the character in this particular way. And at the same time, they were like, okay, well, just because we're recasting this person doesn't mean that we need to get rid of this person who did what we asked them to do perfectly well. We can keep them around and still have them do their thing that still, you know, perform on this show, but without makeup. And I think that that's cool. You know, I don't know which one of us is trying to find the more optimistic version of these <laughs> events. I think it's, I they think both seem pretty optimistic. I like my version. Cause I, I think it's funnier. Okay. Uh, this scene is weird because of, Giorgio again. Giorgio seems like the last person who would be like, get her out of there. Giorgio seems to be the person who'd be like, and I mean, maybe it's because she feels a personal connection to, you know, Burnham or something like that, but she really seems like someone who'd be like, 
No, we should totally let her die. This this would be good. This 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 is you know this is how we we you know we play this out. But she's like, we're coming to get you, Michael. And I I find this frustrating for a lot of reasons. Everyone is doing this wrong. Only Spock understands what's going on. Right. And they're all wrong because it doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, there's that too. But here's 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 another thing, which has absolutely nothing to do with any of that stuff. But is okay. related to this scene. I love how uh, Georgiou's suit looks exactly the same as the rest of them, but it's just all black. It's like it's like it's like when they make Jordans in different colors, and you know they all have like it's the, just uh, like Jordans. The, I was going to say it's a lot like Jordans, like the the Chicago colorway, and then she's got like the black cat c- colorway. And it's like, that's cool. It's a classic black cat look. Yeah. I, just, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it looks really sharp. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Looks very pointy. I mean, you know, Gersha Phillips, the costume designer, has talked about how she loves dressing people in black, how she basically just wears black all the time, and how she really wants to do the Section 31 show because it's a bunch of people, like, wearing black, and they're not in, like, uniform. They're just wearing, like, cool black outfits. And uh, there's, there's. I understand George the motivation cool to work outfit. in a limited color palette. That makes sense. You yeah. know, it makes shopping a lot easier. You have to buy fewer bolts of fabric. I used to wear black, like exclusively, basically all the time, and uh, occasionally I'll get an extra color here or there. But it's mm-hmm. more than anything, it's annoying because then you got to like match clothing instead of just like, you know. No, I don't do that. No, I know. No, whatever. <sighs> so. The Red Angel is appearing. Because you know how it is when you're from the future. You have to arrive at the last second. Uh, she's just has a flair for the dramatic. Yeah, that's a solid explanation for all of the dumb things that are going on. <laughs> uh, you know. Time travel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those are really cool suits. I just said that. I really like the space suits. No, no, no. I mean, you like the suits. Like, I I want them to wear them for more missions. Okay. Like, I want them to... I want. Why aren't they wearing those for all of their away missions? It just seems like the right thing to do. No, I mean, do you see... I mean, look, look at how long it would take to put that on. You know? I mean, like today, I was going to wear like a. You mean in the real world, shirt. or with like Iron Man, like automatically suiting you up? Technology. I, I'm saying like in their world, you know. In their world, nah, it shouldn't take that long. I mean, there are times where I'm like, oh, I really want to wear these shoes, but they're high tops, and they're a lot harder to slide on my feet than my New Balance 990s. So I'm just going to okay, wear the 990s. Real quick, real quick yeah. different topic. Oh, okay, what's happening here? Well, clearly something's going on and uh, someone's resetting something so that he gets stabbed in the eye and dies. So I guess he's not going to be one of the regulars on the Section 31. What? No way. (laughs) You mean the guy that George Joe's obviously going to be killing and or replacing just died? Wow. What a weird, surprising turn of events. <laughs> you know what? I was convinced, but whatever, you know? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It happens. So, hey, maybe Sonia Sone will be in it. I mean, she's part of Section 31, right? Burnham's yeah, name. I mean, arguably, she's somehow related to it, at least. Yeah, she says she was working for them. Or he said she was working for them. Right, but working for them isn't the same thing as being a member. No. So, here's the reveal. And at first, I, I really did think that this was Burnham. I, You know, I thought, like, the long hair was like, oh, you know, she's future Burnham, whatever. She grew her hair out. But mm-hmm. then, you know, when you see... Sonia Sohn, I'm like, oh, that's so badass, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's something. 
it it sure doesn't really make any sense. Well, whatever. we'll find out. I mean, who knows? No. Maybe maybe next week they'll be like, here's how all the time travel works. Hey, if they came in and were like, here's the deal. The time travel all makes sense because none of it was time travel. It was all a ruse designed by a whole bunch of different people. And the group of people kept changing. Uh, it's kind of a kind of elaborate. There was this guy, Brian, and then Alex came over and another like a whole bunch of things. Michelle's in charge now. She's sorting it all out. Like that would at least come close to explaining it. Mm hmm. And that would be a very solid explanation. I would accept that completely. Yeah. Be sure to check out our Discovery coverage throughout the week. We have Live from the Edge with Bruce and Brandy. We've got Postcards from the Edge with Amy. We've got The Main Show with Patrick. And we've got Notes from the Edge with Chris, which will be coming soon. Uh, you'll find all of these in the main feed for The Edge and in the Trek FM master feed. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Discovery. The best place to do that is in the Babel Conference, as proven at the start of this episode. Or, uh, am I right? Yeah. Um, our listeners group on Facebook, where Amy Nelson will collect your feedback for postcards from The Edge. You can also find us on Twitter at Trek FM, or send us an email using the contact form on our website at trek.fm slash contact. Choose to send to a show and choose The Edge. We'd like to thank our associate producers, Norman C. Lau, Tony Robinson, Thomas Puleo, Lisa Slack, Shoab Mirza, Richard Rutledge, James Muldrow, Cornelia Reutner, Ryan Maylett, Brian Maloch, and Chris Tribuzio. Thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to help us keep all of our shows going and even become an associate producer yourself, visit patreon.com slash trekfm for all the details. All right, that's about it. I've been thinking about track puns, and I, I can't, I can't think of any this week. I'm too tired. I've got it. All right, let's do it. Let's hear it. When dealing with multiple timelines, with different motivations of people in the future and the past, and what they may or may not want to do and what they may or may not want to preserve especially considering the likelihood of an infinity of possible timelines when dealing with all of these possibilities keep track of your character's motivations it's a bit wordy but it could work deal with it okay